My name is Vahid Chitzos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Absolutely. My name is Jeff Hagee. I'm tuning in from Gilbert, Arizona. Awesome. Awesome. Gilbert, it's pretty cool. So you're about what, 20 minutes from, how far are you from uh, Scottsdale? Scottsdale, probably from my place in Scottsdale, I'm about 45 minutes. Okay, so not bad. That, that's down the block. Cool. So listen, I was watching one of your 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 IG live sessions. By the way, whoever is doing the whole entire Instagram, when you fire them, let them know I got a good job. I'm gonna pay them maybe two times as much as what you're paying. Just have them come to me because it, it it's good work, man. I need to hire that person because <laughs> now I'm jealous with the IG TVs. Hey, thanks, man. You have to clear. You have to get out of your own head and stop your own negativity. That was one of the topics of one of the videos you have done. Yep. What the heck does that mean? Because I think that's very interesting for everybody to learn. Yeah, you know what? I something that I find more and more often, and and ever since I started teaching it, it made me recognize it in myself more often too. Which is all I try to teach is helping people to recognize it so that they can change their actions but you know all the conversations that are going on in your head all the time are questions that you're asking yourself most of the time and there's so often that you're you're asking yourself questions like why do I think I can do that why do, why do I want to try that because I'm gonna fail or you know what why would I be able to accomplish that and I think the more we recognize we're having that conversation in our head we can change those questions and by changing our questions we can change the entire outcome because we can approach the situation completely different but if i'm having negative thoughts or doubts is that is that a bad thing or is that a good thing because i feel like sometimes we need that or else everybody will be jumping off the building like you gotta have that negative thought. like i think it's like more pros and cons of the situation not like doubting it but is that a good defense mechanism as we, as a human being we have? Or how do we change that when we're an entrepreneur? You know, I, I get what you're saying. I, I mean, it's kind of the devil's advocate. You know, if you're just, if you're, you know, unicorns and rainbows all the time and everything's perfect and you're never asking yourself negative questions or looking at the negative scenarios, then yeah, you're going to probably get smacked in the face and not, not really learn from your mistakes as well. So I think there are some good aspects of having those negative thoughts, but you've also got to be able to approach things from a positive aspect and be able to look at them and say, you know what? Yeah, I'm having this negative thought and this is a good reason why I'm having it. And so this is where I'm going to go with things and I'm going to change some things maybe, or I'm having it just because I don't have the confidence that I should have going forward. So I think you do need to look at those thoughts and analyze them and decide, if it's a good negative thought that it's, yeah, it's kind of a warning sign or if it's something that you're just doubting yourself. Do you think we're the only species on this planet that we can think about what we think about? I do. Yes. <laughs> and because I, that I, is pretty crazy. That's a, that's a whole entire leap because I don't know how many animals we have, how many different kinds and you know, on this planet. Uh, I mean, I don't know what the number is, but I'm pretty sure it's in hundreds of thousands how crazy is it that we're the only ones that we could think, like, we can control what we think, like, that's crazy to me. And why are we the only ones? Why are we the only ones? I don't know that answer. <laughs> that would be a but, good question for a video. We got to do some research on that. Why are we the only ones? Because if you're an entrepreneur, I mean, what is your definition of an entrepreneur? Because as an entrepreneur, you have to do that. So let's get into the definition of what is an entrepreneur and why do entrepreneurs need a coach? Yeah, for sure. So to me, an entrepreneur is someone that wants to take their own path and be in charge of their own destiny. And they want to be a powerful creator in what they're doing and something that's going to help others in some shape, way or form and help humankind in some, some way. And I think a lot of times, I mean, just like that, because of those thoughts that we're having in our head, or it's because of the experience we have or just needing something that someone with experience or background or references to run things by. Because, I mean, even with my mastermind group, I find so much power in that because people get so narrow focus on what they're doing, where if they get an outside perspective, they can do so much better. I mean, I, I, I look at it, you know, you look at 
Tiger Woods, LeBron James, Michael Jordan, they all had coaches and it was a huge impact on them because they needed that coach to help them really get to the level that they had the ability to do, to be at. And I think entrepreneurs are the same thing is they've got a ability within them and a coach can help them expose their own talents and the things that they can do and help them in, you know, being a devil's advocate and helping them make decisions to get to the level that they really can be. What are some of the criteria if today Jeff wanted to find a coach? What are some of the criteria that you will be looking before you identify who's going to be your next coach? What are, what are some, some of the metrics that you use? That I would use? I would look at, number one, experience. Um, you know, and that's, I've been an entrepreneur for over 20 years, and I, I was an entrepreneur long before I started coaching. And I think that goes a long ways because along with that 20 years of experience as an entrepreneur, I've got a lot of failures that I can help someone avoid. And besides that, I also think someone that is really concerned and focused on their own mindset, on their own personal development and their own growth, that even, you know, they might be up here, but they're not satisfied with being there. They're continuing to look for ways to grow and to improve themselves. So that's probably the, the top things I look for. I, I think that was my, one of my questions that I had about like 10 years ago. I wanted to find out what, what considers someone or what qualities does somebody need to have to be dissatisfied. And I learned that for regular people, dissatisfaction means you're crying, you're complaining. But I learned because I got exposed to a lot of entrepreneurs, dissatisfaction meaning meant that you know you can do more and you want more. It doesn't mean you're crying where you at. So it was a very distinct definition of what a lot of people call dissatisfaction. So I think you just got to be hungry. I think that's a better definition. Yeah. You just got to have that hunger. Exactly. Because if you're, if you're doing awesome, if you've done some incredible things in your life and you're just satisfied, there's no more growth. You're not going anywhere. And when you stop growing, you're dying. So, yeah, I, I totally agree with you. How often do you recommend for entrepreneurs or people that are trying to get into business? Self-development. Talk to me. Like, what are some of the methods that you use yourself to be able to stay up to speed, you know, with the trends, all of that, and build up on what you already got as far as the business and entrepreneurship knowledge? Uh, if someone is starting brand new, what are some of your recommendations? There's a lot of things you can do. Um, number one, you've got to be reading every day. You know, if someone like Warren Buffett spends two, three hours a day reading, I think that tells us something, right? And, you know, there's so much knowledge out there that we can learn from. And I think you've got to be very meaningful in what you're reading and studying and stuff. You know, I used to just want to get, I, I remember when I heard Tony Robbins say that when he started out, he wanted to get through 700 books. So I'm like, well, work for him let's do it and so it was like read a book go on to the next read a book go on to the next but now I'm a lot more um, purposeful in my reading making sure I'm reading on topics that I'm really focused on at the moment and I I really try to study them you know right now I'm reading uh, Benjamin Hardy's new book that's coming out in a few weeks and I've spent a lot of time just really digesting it and even this morning I went back because there was some stuff I read last night so I'm like, I, I really want to read that again. And so I'm going back and more than just reading it, I'm learning it and trying to really absorb it. But then there's so many other tools that you can have. There's the, there's podcasts, you know, stuff like this, that, you know, there, you can learn so much from other people's experiences. And that's why I love biographies and autobiographies as well. But, you know, the podcasts and, you know, even though I love to read, uh, you know, this morning at the gym, my, I, I go to the gym with my son and work out. And as we're leaving, we're both taking off our headphones. And he says, do you ever listen to music? <laughs> I said, no, I've got a podcast in right now. And he's like, yeah, I stopped listening to music a lot. I don't even know. Like if, if, if you come and tell me, like if you listen to radio, like I wouldn't know who's who. Like yeah. my wife is like, you, you listening to this guy? I'm like, I have no idea who this guy is. <laughs> like, if you tell me who Tony Robbins or Napoleon Hill or, or L. Nine Gill, like, all of those guys, they're, uh, like, I can pick up on their voices. 
all of this new music stuff like it could be foreign language i don't know any of that so that's the that's the there, there's much time that we we have that we can utilize how do people people find you how do people find you? um here here on instagram it's jeff Hagee coaching on uh my website is jeffhagee.com it's j e f f h e g g i e.com and i've got some great programs on there right now some free programs that are really really applicable to the times right now and everything we're going through so that would be awesome to have people check that out i think they'll be very beneficial my momentum program on there right now is an awesome free program Awesome. Jeff, what's your favorite all-time uh, self-development book? You know, Give I, us the top two. Top two, well, the, the classics. Uh, Think and Grow Rich and How to Win Friends and Influence People are probably my top two. And I've read them and listened to them over and over, and I just absolutely love them. Awesome. Listen, thank you so much for taking this time out of your busy schedule, being with us. Keep up the good work on IGTV. Once this video is out, I'm going to link to some of your IGTV. Because I think everybody should be listening to that stuff every day. Keep up the good work. Hopefully, we can do more with you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. You got to Talk to you later. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.